If you've ever watched Godot tutorials on YouTube, you've probably been told to use singletons for things like your game manager, your audio manager, or your input manager. I mean, I'm guilty of saying that too. But look, just by the title of this video alone, singletons aren't evil. Godot autoloads are actually a really powerful feature. But here's the problem. Most Godot projects don't fail because of bugs. They fail because the architecture doesn't scale. So in this video, I want to talk about why you should stop defaulting to singletons in Godot 4. And I'll show you four real examples where I would usually reach for singletons, but now use a cleaner architecture instead. So this isn't a never use autoloads video. It's a use autoloads intentionally video. Let's get started. Now, so find the video, I've been using singletons and autoloads interchangeably. And that's because in Godot, when we talk about singletons, we're almost always referring to autoload scripts. Scripts that Godot loads at startup and keeps it globally accessible for the entire game. Technically, singleton is the programming pattern and autoload is Godot's implementation of that pattern. But for most Godot devs, they serve the same purpose, a script you can access from anywhere, anytime. And here's the thing, autoloads aren't just limited to scripts at all. They can handle much, much more. But I'll save that for another video though. Today, we're focusing strictly on script autoloads. Using singletons feels really good at first, and it's easy to get carried away. That's because they're global, you can access them from any Anywhere, and most beginner friendly tutorials encourage that pattern because it works very well for small demos. But there is a hidden cost. Singletons hide dependencies. When a node depends on a singleton, you can't see that dependency in the scene tree. You can't easily replace it and you can't reuse that scene somewhere else without dragging the entire global system with it. So let's walk through some common situations and I'll show you what I mean. Now, this is not a tutorial, so I am going to make Make some assumptions here, but I'll do my best to explain things as I go along. This is probably the most common autoload, a game manager. You'll usually see something like this. We'll just autoload a game manager script, store the score in there, and access it from everywhere. And technically, yes, that works. But here's the problem. Now every node in your game can modify this global state. You don't know who changed the score. You don't know when it changed. And if it's ever reused in a level scene, it suddenly depends on a global object that isn't visible. Instead of a global game manager, try this instead. Make a game controller node that lives inside your main scene. Now the level talks to the controller. That controller owns the score and emits signals when things change. And also, the UI can listen to the controller and everything is explicit. The big win here is this. Your scenes become portable, you can drop a level into another project if you wanted to, and it only needs one clearly defined dependency. Audio managers are another classic singleton. Just call audiomanager.playsound. Simple, right? Until your project grows. Now your menu sounds, your gameplay sounds, and your cutscene sounds are all controlled by the same global rules. You want to mute just the gameplay or fade only one cutscene? Good luck. A better approach is scene scoped audio. Instead of one global audio manager, each major scene gets its own audio bus node. That node handles playing sound effects only for that context. So menus control their own audio, levels control their own audio, and cutscenes control their own audio. Now audio behavior is local, not global, and you can still have an autoload for things like master volume settings, just not for playing every single sound in a game. Input managers are where things get messy really fast. You'll often see something like input manager that is jumped pressed. This works until you want things like enemy AI, replays, multiplayer, or different control schemes. Now your player is tightly coupled to global input logic. Instead, think of input as a dependency. Your player doesn't care where the input comes from. It just wants movement data. So you give it an input provider. For a player, that provider 
reads from Gadoo's input system. For enemy AI, it returns scripted values. And for a replay system, it could read recorded input. Same player, different input sources, no global input manager required. This is one of those patterns that may feel like extra work at first, but it saves you massive refactors to your code later. Now, this one breaks games extremely easily. And abilities manager autoload. Now, abilities are global rules, but abilities themselves aren't global. Let me explain. Abilities belong to individual characters. So, if one player can dash, that doesn't mean that every entity in the game can dash. Instead of a global abilities manager, why not use something like composition? That way, each ability is its own node, and each entity owns its own abilities. Things like cooldowns, unlocks, upgrades, and so on. They all live with the entity that uses them. So with enemies, multiple characters, and multiplayer upgrades, there are no special cases and no global state hacks. So now, let me be clear, singletons or autoloads are not all bad. They are great for things like settings, save systems, platform services, and debugging tools. Here's a rule I follow. If everything in the game truly needs it, then an autoload might make sense. If one system needs it, then I pass it in that system. So for me, visibility beats convenience. Godot gives us amazing tools like signals, composition, and scene inheritance. If we rely too much on autoloads, we miss out on what makes Godot really powerful. So the goal here isn't never use autoloads, the goal is to stop using them by default. And that's why rethinking how we use autoloads is such a game changer in Godot. When we use them intentionally, instead of by default, our projects stay cleaner, more scalable, and way easier to maintain. If this breakdown helped you understand Godot's architecture a little better, smash that like button and subscribe so you don't miss the next deep dive. And I want to hear from you. How are you using autoloads in your projects? Do you love them, hate them, or are you trying to transition away from them? Drop a comment below and let's talk about it. I really do read all of them. Until next time, happy coding and I'll see you in the comments. This has been Diragu Games.